Here's a demonstration of chaos by Professor Carlo F. Barenghi of Newcastle University. So how do we call this um, thing? What's it called? Well, this is called um, a pendulum. It's two sticks joined together. And uh, you expect that uh, if you let it go, it swings in some repeatable way. But look at what happens if uh, it swings by large, large swings. So the motion is clearly much more erratic. Above all, it's not reproducible. If I do it again, I get something very, very different. Why is it so? It's uh, quite amazing. Seems very violent. But eventually, dissipation wins and uh, it's less violent. Now the motion becomes more reproducible. Let, let's do it again. Okay, let me swing this pendulum from the vertical position. This would be an unstable equilibrium point. It is unstable indeed, as you can see, but look at the motion. It's a quite a complicated combination of oscillations of the two sticks. Sometimes it is as if it has a will of its own. So this is very different from a, a regular pendulum, right? So it's very different from a regular pendulum, which is would be the oscillation of a single of a single stick. And for a regular pendulum there is not much which can happen. You can either oscillate around this this equilibrium point at the bottom, or if it has much more energy it will actually go around uh -huh. and around. The double pendulum can be chaotic, uh, so it's a kind of paradigm of things which are complicated. Can you do it one more time? The, uh, just the chaotic one. Sorry? Can you do it one more time, the chaotic one? The, the pendulum? Uh -huh. Let me get it from this position. Okay, so this is the chaotic mode, right? So let's start the pendulum from the vertical position. Okay. So it has actually much energy in this position, it's losing energy slowly, dissipating energy into heat by the friction with the air and air resistance and by the friction at the hinge here and there. And look at the motion, which is quite amazing. It looks regular for a while and then it starts then doing some something really crazy. Yes, suddenly it is as if it is alive and it has a mind of its own and it starts swinging the bottom stick around and round and then changes its mind. So in a sense it seems alive. This is amazing now. Look at that. It's sort of having fun <laughs> spinning this way. Unfortunately it's running out of energy. And then it has fewer things it can do, right? Less energy. With less energy available yeah. to it. It's losing energy. And the point is that if we do it again, it's never the same. That's a definition of chaos? Well, the definition of chaos actually is that if we start from essentially the same initial condition, not exactly the same, of course, because I cannot clearly put it exactly in the same initial 
condition because there is always some tiny deviation clearly um, if I, anyhow if I restart the evolution is different so it's very very sensitive on, on how it starts but the broad picture is similar there are oscillations both to the right and to the left and at the end I'm afraid we have decay it's a bit like the life of an individual being it's different one one person different from the other but we end up in the same way <laughs> now the life of this one was not as exciting as the other I think the other one the previous uh, incarnation perhaps of the pendulum had uh, a nice uh, sequence of uh, of rotations, which uh -huh. I liked. But I liked let's try it again. Yeah. Uh -huh. so let's try okay. person number three. Ah, this is. Ooh. It's going to do something interesting. Let's see. Yeah, this one is a Shakespeare. He yeah. writes a book anti clockwise. Um, you see? No. Now the interesting point is this, I think. That when you play these games for the first time, you're surprised by the richness of the motion and complicated dynamics which you see. If you do it, say, ten times like I've done, after a while, you start realizing that actually it doesn't matter how you start, the motion is always the same. There are some irregular swings either to the right or to the left, um, but more or less uh, the evolution is the same. So in, it's a bit like looking at uh, really a human being and then yet another human being. So what's the definition of chaos and how can, can you tell us about other systems that are chaotic? Well, um, lots, lots of systems. Uh, for example, a falling leaf like this, it's not a leaf, it's just some paper, uh, will go down in a very irregular way. And if I do it again, starting from the same position, it will not do the same. Yeah, it goes in another direction. And no matter how I try, no matter how I try, I will never get the evolution to be the same. In fact, I can do this. I take two fresh, clean leaves. I put them like this together. And see what I... They fall differently. And clearly they do not. So these are two different individuals, each one has a yes. different life, even so though they start maybe close to each other. Yes, so the initial, con the starting point is very similar. Let me turn it so that it looks similar. Starting point is similar, but they go differently. Hmm. However, they end up in the same way, they've lost energy and now they are on the ground like the pendulum. So all very interesting, this motion, but they end up in the same way. So they had a chance to do something interesting during their life. <laughs> do you think we're all chaotic in our lives? you think chaos really rules our lives? So is it, is it chance or is it chaos or is it both? But clearly, Possible, possibly this is um, a schematic, simplified, super idealized model of what is life. I don't like it actually because I keep seeing the same end. <laughs> <laughs> the same as with the pendulum, right? The same with the pendulum. Uh, so it's kind of gloomy. 